morning. Happy New Year. It's good to be back with you all in 2022. Uh, Pastor Kendall is gone today, so you just get me and Chris for the service. Uh, he's gone. I, had, I went back to the Iowa, the Des Moines area for my family Christmas earlier this week, and so Pastor Kendall's gone today with his family for, for Christmas. So we'll do without him. I decided that uh, since, since it's just me, I'm going to give it a shot uh, singing parts of the liturgy. I'm not trained in singing, so I'm going to ask for lots of grace from Grace Lutheran Church, uh, but we'll give it a shot since the supervisor's not here to give me a grade on it. So uh, your announcements, congratulations to Austin and Kimberly Mork on the birth of their daughter, Maddie Ann. Uh, the poinsettias, we have a few more left. If you ordered one of those, you can pick it up and take it home. We just ask that you leave the gold pots behind so we can continue to use those in the years to come. A lot of ministry resuming this week at Grace with all of the youth stuff, Sunday school, next Sunday, confirmation this Wednesday, candles and Alleluia choir this Wednesday, and then we'll have a YAP meeting and a mentor meeting next Sunday, and we'll be preparing for our confirmation retreat the following Sunday, Monday. I think it's a, it's a, a day off at school, so we'll have that retreat then and then midweek communion will be this Tuesday, January 4th at 2 p.m. Your radio and online services are given in memory of Doris Anderson and Karen Spencer in honor of Doris's 88th birthday on December 31st, and that's from Weldon Anderson. So with that, you can rise and greet each other, say hi to people joining us online, and then we'll continue with worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. We sing our gathering hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 283.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O God, our Redeemer, you created light that we might live, and you illumine our world with your beloved Son. By your Spirit, comfort us in all darkness, and turn us toward the light of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our lector is Art Johnson. Good morning. The first lesson is from Psalm 147 verses 12 through 20. They read as follows. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues and ordinance to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. Read as follows. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained the inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope in Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal and the promised Holy Spirit. Thus is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption is God's own people to the praise of his glory, the word of the Lord. The gospel according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that 
all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen its glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. One week ago today, a great man by the name of Desmond Tutu passed away. I don't know if you've heard of him, but Tutu was a bishop, an archbishop in the Anglican Church in South Africa. He was the first black South African to be elected to those positions, and he was a prominent leader in the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, the uh, against the racial discrimination that was happening there in that time, sort of like the Jim Crow laws in uh, the United States in the past. One of his great accomplishments was his leadership in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This, he served as its chairperson, and the purpose of this commission was to establish some sort of restorative justice in the wake of all of the human rights abuses that happened in South Africa under apartheid, under this uh, legal discrimination. Many people were, were killed and, and uh, suffered at, at different, different points on different sides of the conflict. And so this attempt at restorative justice was different from the normal justice system that we have, which is mostly retributive, which is where the punishment equals the crime, right? We need to get even for the things that happen and but the wrongs and the evils of the apartheid system in South Africa were just too much for this system to imagine any way forward with all of the terrible things that happened, and so they attempted restorative justice and did two major things to accomplish this. So one, it invited victims to come forward and tell their story. Tell their story with the promise of reparations for their suffering. And then two, it also invited perpetrators to come forward and tell their story. And for them, the promise of amnesty from their crimes, freedom from punishment. So the Gospel of John begins with an image of a world drenched in darkness. Darkness like that of the apartheid system in South Africa and, and evil all across the world. It, the gospel echoes the beginning of the creation story, where darkness uh, covered the face of the deep and the earth was a formless void. There was this darkness of chaos and disorder before God had created anything. And then John goes a step further to make explicit in this darkness a moral dimension. That this darkness isn't just disorder, but it's evil itself. And that's the image we start with in John. The light shines in the darkness, though, right? And the darkness did not overcome it, John testifies. This is the word of God. This was the word who became flesh, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world and shines in the darkness and is not overcome by it. Jesus will be crucified in darkness, right? As we know from the story, but he will overcome it in the resurrection. So this is, this is our story. This is what we celebrate in the Christmas season. We celebrate light breaking into the world and the baby Jesus and scattering darkness. We celebrate Jesus' birth, salvation come to earth. And what strikes me is how exactly this light shines in darkness. What exactly it 
looks like that Jesus shines so bright in the midst of all this darkness. And what John te testifies to is that the character of the light is grace and truth. Grace and truth. We have seen its glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So the presence of Jesus, the light of the world, shines grace and truth in all the dark places. And this was true in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. This was the work of Desmond Tutu. It was truth and grace. Tell the truth, the full, the entire unadulterated truth, and receive grace. Tell the truth about the evil done unto you and receive the grace of reparations, of a hope for healing from all that pain. And tell the truth about the evil you've done to another, the way you've hurt another, and receive the grace of amnesty, of freedom from punishment. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus reveals the truth in a world drenched in darkness and is not overcome by its evil, but shines grace over it instead. So wherever there is grace and truth, there we find Jesus. So this is true with something like uh, Desmond Tutu's Truth and Reconciliation Co Commission on a big scale. The, the point of it was to transform an entire society with truth and grace. But it's, it's also true in our individual lives on a more personal level. In our own lives, Jesus shines grace and truth in order to bring us closer to him. From this fullness we have all received, the Bible says. So we tell the truth, the entire unadulterated truth, and we receive grace. We tell the truth in confession about the ways that we've sinned against one another and God and receive the grace of God's forgiveness. We can also tell the truth about the pain that we suffer in our lives. And we'll receive, the, we're promised the grace of God suffering alongside us, of God being with us in that. Now the key that I, I want us to, to focus on in all of this is that the full truth is what's needed. It's, it's that the outpouring of grace that we receive from God and one another can be only as deep as the telling of truth. The outpouring of grace, the experience of grace, can be only as deep as the telling of truth. When we look at Tutu's commission, this was absolutely true. The fullness of reparations for somebody who was abused by the apartheid system, the fullness of those reparations could not be received unless they revealed the full truth of the evil done unto them. And likewise, Amnesty was not granted to perpetrators if it was found out that they did not tell the full truth. The outpouring of grace can be only as deep as the telling of truth. So this is, this is true in our individual lives too, right? And just think about the way that we ask each other how we're doing and maybe when we're passing on the street or just have small talk, it might be, Something like, oh, how, how are you, Kurt? And, oh, I'm busy but good, you know. And, Kurt, how are you, Pastor Austin? And, well, you know, it, it's, I'm super just learning how to get through these cold winter days. I mean, we just have this small talk, and we sort of stay on the, the surface level of what's going on in our lives. I, I'm, I'm not saying we need to constantly spill our hearts out to one another, but what, what if we went deeper with the truth? Because someone's compassion, for instance, someone's compassion for us when we're going through something difficult, something tough in our lives, can be only as much as what we share with them, as what we, we let them know is going on. And likewise, freedom and forgiveness from the things that we've done wrong or the ways that we've hurt somebody can be only as deep as the extent to which we own our mistakes. So I was reminded of 
the way this grace and truth works this past week when we hit another uh, terribly tough anniversary for the entire community, but especially for the Overlanders uh, with the 18th anniversary of their daughter Kenzie being killed in a car accident. And what impressed me is that, is what I saw on Facebook, this outpouring of compassion that I saw on Facebook. Becky and Terry made a post remembering Kenzie and over, I saw over 400 people interacted with that post and over or nearly 150 comments of condolences and support and memories of Kenzie's life. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that makes the pain go away, but if you'd ask them, they'd tell you that mean, it meant a lot to them. And the point I want to make is that what makes such an outpouring of grace and support of, of love and compassion possible and, and sharing these memories of Kenzie in the first place is, was Becky and Terry's willingness to be vulnerable by sharing a simple post about their grief and hope. It was their willingness to tell the truth about what happened. And then so many here and in the community chose not to ignore that truth, the truth of a painful reality, but embraced it instead. The telling of truth gives an opportunity for deeper love and support. Jesus, Jesus the light showing up and shining in dark places. So, friends in Christ, I, I invite us all to, to tell the truth, to, to turn to Jesus with everything, with all the darkness that presses in on us in our lives. And the promise we have is that we will receive the light of grace upon grace. John came as a witness to testify to the light, the text says so that all might believe through him. His job was to point to all the places that he saw the light of the world, Jesus Christ breaking into the darkness, all the places where truth and grace were on display for the world to see. And this light may appear fleeting at times. The Bible is clear about it. Jesus, later in the first chapter of John, will have all of these scenes where he's flickering in and out, it seems. It's this weird dynamic of, John pointing to him in the street and saying, this is the Lamb of God about whom I spoke to you about. And Jesus then disappears. The light will appear fleeting like the unfinished work of uh, restorative justice in South Africa and, and everywhere where inequality persists. It's fleeting like our own abilities to be honest and brave in telling the truth about darkness. John's task in the gospel remained the same anyways, to point to the light. And I think that it's our task too. So let us carry on, even if it appears fleeting. Let us boldly point to the places where light breaks into the darkness, wherever we see it. Trusting that darkness not has, has not overcome it. For Jesus continues to come and beckons us to follow him in grace and truth. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the hymn of the day, Arise, Your Light Has Come, number 314.
confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we begin a new year with renewed hopes and expectations, let us surrender ourselves once again to you alone. Help us to see that all our New Year's resolutions and self-help projects come to nothing without you. Give us the energy and the vision for what you have for us in 2022. Lord, in your mercy. Humble Lord, we thank and praise you for all the generosity you have stirred in the hearts of your people this Christmas season. All donations to the winter clothing drive, all the random acts of kindness and gifts, all that even went unseen. Keep us in this place of humility, recognizing that all we have comes from you and continuing to give of ourselves for the sake of your world in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth and grace, shower us in your mercy anew this day. Give us the courage to be honest with ourselves and see all of the darkness in our lives as you see it, that which we cause and that which we suffer from others. Help us to see all darkness transformed by the light of your presence, full of grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy. God, our stronghold, renew the strength of all your people who suffer in body and spirit, including the following from our congregation. Greg Tukolke, Clara Solson, Jack Flayton, Jim Anderson, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Monica Kennedy, Brad Madsen, Lauren Thone, Julie Miron, Joey Anderson Ernest, John Perry Peterson, Mike Thompson, April Fess Kumbvita, Asher Fierkenstad, Ken Menning, and Christy Peterson Thomas, David Bro, Arliss Buer, Doug Breberg, Evelyn Lundgren, Linda Tollickson, Madeline Wilton Gustafson, Lucille Williams, Deb Trapp, Joy Winningstad, the families of Maria Redmond and Jean Sis, and the family of Patty Law. Lord, in your mercy. We commend all these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to our offering prayer, the last page of the bulletin. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness 
of all sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. Come.
Let the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We may stand for the blessing. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, serve the Lord.